first of all, a word about supplies and about the art journal that I'm going to be using today. This is one of my junk journals that I made myself and that uh, I haven't done anything in yet. So I'm starting a new journal today. But if you want to find out how I made it from scratch, including choosing the papers and the binding and preparing the covers, then check out my junk journal making video where I show you the whole process right from the start, right to the end. Uh, and maybe you want to do one with me and have one like this one. So that's the book I'm going to be using and it's full of random papers and then just, you know, some painted papers and some envelopes and a lot of really random stuff. But this is something I really enjoy because um, it gives me that, um, you know, there's no blank pages here. There's already some marks and there's already lots and lots of starting points. And I find these papers that I choose for my art journals already inspiring, right? So, you know, there's already some sparks of inspiration here and that uh, can be really fun and makes it easier to our journal every day. Now, I will be using a lot of papers and cutouts, all of these that you can see on this table and that you will see on this video, all of that is available as a printable and it's free. I made it free for everyone. So we just have to check out my creative sparks and there is all you need for uh, our journaling basically when it comes to papers. So grab them right away, maybe pause this video even, grab them, print them out, cut them out, and then we can do some more journaling together and we can have pretty similar journals when it comes to papers. But there are also other supplies that I will be using. Um, I will talk you through them as I use them because I'm not sure if all of them will appear on the video. But there are some drawing mediums, for instance, Woody um, by Stabilo. That's one of my favorite uh, pencils because it's really special, creamy and water soluble. But also some charcoal, some soft dry pastels, uh, even some hand carved stamps. I have a couple of acrylic paints here. Um, some watercolors, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. But my best friend here is clear gesso. Um, and that's a smooth finish clear gesso. This one's, I think, by Holbein, medium smooth, it's called, but really, you know, it is smooth when you apply it on paper. And that will, that's the magic ingredient that will allow me to do a lot of, you know, even wet mediums, like watercolors, on some of those very thin pages and not spoil anything, because this is, um, you know, solid pattern. So if you would apply watercolor on top of that, that would turn into, you know, it would, the paper would absorb it very quickly and it would probably even make some holes in it because it's too thin for that. But if you apply a layer of clear gesso, then that's no problem because it pre provides that tooth and it makes it, um, it makes it possible for wet mediums to go on thin papers. Okay. Before I start my daily art journaling, and sometimes it's just like 15 minutes of some random marks, but always before I start, I like to set an intention, and that intention can be very simple and just in my head, what I when I light my candle or my uh, other smelly thing. Uh, but sometimes I take a little bit more time and write my intention down, and you could do that with a pencil or, or with ink, like I'm going to do right now. And that intention can be can be anything. It's just basically what what are you trying to get out, get out of this process? Why are you here? What is it doing to you? What do you want it to to do to you? What is the good thing that you want to to you know grab here? So I'm just gonna find a random page and and write down very loosely my intention. And that you know is an intention, and it does that. It helps me focus and be more mindful and in the moment, but also it straight away creates some pattern, some mark on my page. So I want to reconnect with my process through this art journal. I want to celebrate the <laughs> spiritual uh, awakening that, that I went through uh, in the last three months and start putting it into colors and textures and, and marks here. So that's just something, you know, very personal, but it's important to make it very personal because that's what our journaling uh, is. It's a very personal um, piece of um, art or a visual diary. 
Uh, I can't. I have to stop talking when I'm writing, actually. <laughs> so you see straight away uh, that I don't, um, you know, worry about making marks on other papers, and I, I treat it very, very loosely. During this video, uh, I will be talking a lot. You know, this will be a lot about my experience or how my practice works in general. Um, you know, I'll be sharing some tips and, and techniques, but if you find it <laughs> boring or uninteresting, just mute me. I won't be offended. Actually, I won't even know that you did it. So go for it. Put your favorite music on and, and watch me and maybe grab your or journal. Um, to me, it's not not an ego thing here to share my stories with you and for you to to listen to me all the time. That's that's fine if that's not your thing. To me, the most important thing that this video should do is to get you inspired to do some of your own um, intuitive art. So to reconnect and to find my way again, um, this is not the finished spread, right? Or maybe it is. This is a thing about intuitive art journaling. There is no plan. We are not planning anything. I literally, even though I'm filming this and I want it to be sort of okay, right? <laughs> For you, pleasant to watch. I have no end result in mind and that's really really important for me no end result in mind means that i am responding to what is happening on my paper or whatever the substrate is responding rather than planning and trying to get anywhere specific because that straight away takes away the pressure the you know um expectation and expectations never take us anywhere nice <laughs> They always take us to some dark places. So when I'm working in an art journal like this one, my daily practice is I just go random from page to page, make a few marks here and make a few marks there. So I'm just going to, I love these birds and I carve myself a stamp based on that photo. I took that photo at my um, parents' house actually. There is a video I've recorded about it and about Poland and my trip to, trip home. And these um, crows, these are crows, are included in that video. That's a bit of a different one, so you could definitely give it a watch when you want to explore the subject of going back home. What does it mean to um, feel at home? It's a very personal one, I, I think, you know, not everyone's cup of tea, but maybe for some it's a good, interesting thing. The ink that I'm using is called Archival Ink and that's, you know, that's my strong favorite. There is no other one I love more than Archival Ink in jet black because it's very permanent and it really lives long. I mean this pad, I don't know, when was the last time I bought an ink pad? Honestly, maybe five years ago and it's still going and it's beautiful. I do a bit of stamping, you know, it's not like I never use it. Um, and the most important thing is that uh, it's totally, totally permanent. So I can use water-based mediums on top of that layer of stamps and it's not going to reactivate it. While um, some ink pads will, I mean inks will get reactivated and sometimes you might want that happening. But, you know, in my case, I like to see my layers. I'm just gonna go and start putting some collage elements and papers here. Um, I'm using a PVA glue, which is sticky situation, just very plain glue that kids use at school, you know, the kind that is white when you pour it out, but then dries clear. That's, you know, that's a good thing. <laughs> you could use Mod Podge, gel medium, 
for papers you probably want a gel medium that's um, thin not too thick so that's one of the printable papers so that's totally available to you if you would like to grab that I mean there's lots of papers that are from my Polish books or some some treasures you know that I scanned and I um, decided to share with you because I think they're either quirky or just look fun or maybe are a little bit different to some of you so have a look in there because there's quite a lot of stuff put a pencil between those pages so they don't you know doesn't stick together while I go through the book and add more oh by the way this is a quote that I cut out of one of those um, uh, printables and it says just when the caterpillar thought the world was over it became a butterfly so I want to dedicate this video to everyone who ever felt like a, like that caterpillar, because I certainly have. I find this quote very powerful because it can we can use it to relate to so many. I mean, phases in our life. I mean, especially women. I don't know, maybe men too. I don't know, but I feel like especially women when we become mothers or when things change suddenly in our life. This is a big one, isn't it? So I'm just going to put it here. I love this color of, of paper. I mean, this is just, oh, it's my favorite, favorite paper to work on. I think everything looks so good on, on this kind of craft paper. White marks, black marks, pink marks. Everything's just, just comes to life somehow. I don't know why, if you know. Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> now, when you work like like I do, if you want to work with um, you know, an intuitive process like this one, working on random pages rather than on just one page at a time allows you to, First of all, I think produce more, you know, you, you get a lot more done and a lot faster. But also, this is a really, really good exercise to like let go of the expectations and be really free because you get confused. I think our brains get confused because we jump from a page to page. There is no, no plan here and I don't know how this is going to turn out and if it's going to be today or maybe next week or never. Uh, I cannot plan this, so I am just grabbing a supply and putting it, you know, supply or or some paper and putting it wherever wherever I randomly feel like it, and that's all. So, you know, when I teach for Wanderlust, for instance, which is our year-long online mixed media course in our journaling, I have structured lessons where I plan my outcomes, obviously, because I want to teach a technique. I want the adventurers, our students, to feel like they are learning something. You know, teaching is, is different than just my, doing my own thing. So I have this responsibility, right, to do, to make it interesting and make it valuable um, to the students. So, like I said, it's a completely entirely different process because I have to have to plan it and and make sure I know what the end result is and very often you'd be surprised how many samples I make before I actually you know start filming the lesson and make that final piece for the lesson I make samples on my uh, iPad in Procreate and then I make samples on in real on real paper and then I start filming so it's really thought through while this process, my daily process for journaling, is completely different because it allows this freedom. And I mean, how often in your life you get that freedom, that sense of freedom? How often in your life you have the opportunity to just be completely 
truly, you know, careless. Because this process allows that. And I mean, that's that's a big, big deal to me. Because we are responsible people, right? We do things. We care for people. We maybe have children or, or parents or friends that we want to care for. We care for take care of ourselves, do these all these grown up stuff, right? And there's not not very often there's any space for us to be just just stupid, careless. I mean the, the best kind, right? There's no not space no space for that very often. And what activities have you got <laughs> in your repertoire that allow this stupid crazy carelessness what activities right I, I don't can't think of anything besides my daily intuitive or journaling i can be absolutely careless besides the fact that right now i'm gonna <laughs> put this clear just and that's totally because i have a plan for this page i want to do something on this background and that just so will allow me so I don't know what's gonna happen there on that background but if anything's to happen it's gonna have to have a layer of gesso clear gesso oh, I love that honestly gesso my best friend um my best friend's probably actually listening to that and she's thinking oh that's great <laughs> so if you are listening to that Elisa just ignore this I mean if anything happens to me, that just goes to you. I told Jamie. I told Jamie about this. <laughs> right, okay, so this will be drying now. Very good. I'm very excited about it. I'm very, very excited. And while I'm here, while this is drying, let's just make sure this is not sticking to anything. Good. All good. All good. While I'm here, let me just add a little bit more to this page because I want this quote to... To be on it properly. I have been doing daily or journaling for so long now. Um, I don't know, 11 years, but obviously, absolutely, I had breaks and you know, some um, days or, or weeks when I wouldn't do anything. But in general, I stick to that practice because I know I need if I get off track I know I need to get back to it and it's always at the back of my head that come on come on you gotta do it you gotta do it you have to get back to it and do some art every day do some more journaling every day because I know very very well now that this is what really helps me to process my emotions to process whatever I need to process anything that happens situations you know daily life it helps me to reconnect with my inner artist, inner child, uh, inner everything. <laughs> and to find that joy, to find a little bit of that, um, you know, carelessness in um, daily life. So that's, that's very, very valuable to me. Now, if you're not doing daily art journaling and you're thinking, oh, this is maybe a little bit too much, it's too much pressure, why would I have to, why would I need to do it daily and maybe I don't see myself as doing it daily, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, I am not telling you what's right or wrong. I am telling you what works for me and what made the, the biggest difference to my artistic self, if I may say so. There's no right or wrong with making art or making any kind of expressive um, craft or or marks. The only right is that you get to listen to yourself and, and do the things, repeat the things that work for you. Listen to, you know, that feeling inside you and, and what it's telling you. in general I don't chatter today <laughs> but in general I think regular art practice whether it is this daily or weekly like you have some time uh, on a weekly basis that you know you're gonna just devote to some messy art play I think that's that's quite crucial for 
for well-being of everyone who's feeling they want to listen to that creative voice they want to you know honor that creative part of their self and I am totally all, all for it <laughs> I'm here for it okay still wet still wet but getting there okay I'm getting really excited here well, let me do some more stamping because that doesn't need any drying see so another good thing about doing our journaling this way is that you absolutely do not have to wait for things to dry I remember when I used to do some mixed media scrapbooking uh, it used to be really frustrating to me that I had to wait for layers to dry uh, I would use a heating gun or something but um you know, even when I'm doing something for Wanderlust, like a plant project, and it's got to be a, a sequence of of steps, right? And it cannot be sped up. Oh, I'm just so frustrated. I'm not very patient when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to waiting for paint to dry. With this process, no problem. If something needs to dry and you gotta wait, you just do something else. This is a, a stamp I carved myself for K December, I think that was, um, which is a, also a free offering I do every December 24, 21 or 20 sometimes, <laughs> depending on my children and how much they, how much time they allow me. So it's like 20 something days of more journaling with me. You can totally join it, even though it's, it's a December offering. Um, I mean, it's created in December with the busy, busy time in mind, but everything can get a little bit overwhelming, but it's absolutely uh, usable <laughs> right now as well, any time of the year, really. It is a bit seasonal though, but you know, it's free, so you can just jump in and, and just check it out. I'll leave a link in the description of this lesson. Okay. I love these hand carved stamps. I mean, you can buy right now. I mean, you can buy any any stamp you can think of, probably. And there's so many brilliant artists who create stamps. But if you make it yourself, it's just it's just so nice. So I think a, a mix of both, ready made stamps and hard hand carved stamps, is really ideal because you can have some fun with other people's designs and then inject that super extra personal personality into your journal. And another thing, in, a, in an intuitive art journal where we follow just whatever is going on rather than trying to get somewhere, another thing that I really, really love about it is that it allows me to embrace what maybe in different circumstances I would call a mistake. So like here, the stamp got a little, a little blurry. Uh, maybe if I would be doing this for a Wanderlust lesson or for, you know, some other teaching, I would be, um, that's not very good because it doesn't show the stamp properly or it starts looking a little messy and we don't want a messy look in this spot, right? Well, here I'm just like, okay, it blurred and I straight away grab the same stamp and you know, smudged it because I sort of liked it. I think it looks kind of mysterious, you know, like what is this writing? So I am just going to embrace that and I am going to intentionally stamp with it right now and make these blurred marks. It's just stamping and smudging. Oh, liking it. <laughs> I get very excited, so just um, so just be careful here. A little bit like Jamie Oliver cooking. That's me doing our journaling. Come on, get in there. This is so good. <laughs> Some olive oil on it, and maybe not. Okay, is this dry? Yes, this is good. This is good. Oh, actually, this is here. Why not? Try it. Okay, I'm just gonna write something. I'm gonna write something. Whatever comes to my head. 
Uh, nothing comes right now. Hold on, maybe I have a better pencil here because it's a bit thick. I unfortunately don't. Oh, that's okay. You may be wondering, because I said at the beginning that I want this art journal to reflect my personal journey that I went on recently. I want it to be somehow, you know, connecting with that or telling the story of that. And you might be, you know, thinking, so how do you do that? Because I just go totally randomly here. So there is no storytelling, is there? I mean, there's just some random pieces stuck together. <laughs> um, but this is what I believe in. This is how I work. I think the story, you know, the story is for me to read. The story is for me to experience, to process. This is a, an art journal. This is not a canvas that I'm uh, intending to sell on, on Etsy or whatever. This is a, a very personal kind of form of expression, right? So... The only person that has to understand this and, and you know, experience this journey is me, the maker, or you, the maker of yours. And I feel like the, the story is being told in choices of materials that I make, choices of colors, a single word that I will write somewhere. Because every time I open this art journal, I want to remind myself, what is this art journal supposed to be to me right now what is the meaning you know why i'm here now this is something you know i strongly believe and i know we sometimes um, we sometimes avoid calling what we what we do in our art journals calling it art because we think that's not good enough that's not van gogh is it it's not da vinci is this art there are always so many other people who do it better so that doesn't deserve to be called art. Well, I believe that art is skill plus story, meaning. So if you, of course, skill, you can exercise that and, and you can get better at it. And it's important to, you know, to, to try and be better at things, whether it's learning about composition, color or drawing or how you use your supplies. But also that story and the meaning is what makes um, art art to me. If it tells a story and if there is emotion, then it is art. Uh, and I mean, there's nothing that tells a story and helps us express our emotions better than an art journal, especially an intuitive art journal. So this is something to ponder on, maybe for you, if you ever felt like... I can do this, but that's never going to be art. Just think about it. Just think about it. If you feel maybe you lack in skill, then watch some of my wonderless videos or, you know, find yourself someone who inspires you and learn from them. Because learning skills, you know, it's easy. I mean, it's absolutely not easy and it depends on the skill. But what I mean is that it's achievable, right? You can do it. You can you can get there. You can spend some time and, for instance, practicing to draw or building a really good composition that's pleasing, or choosing colors, mixing colors, whatever it is that you you know you want to try. You can learn that, and you can really master those skills with a lot of time and effort. You can. Uh, but the, the storytelling bit, that's, you know, you could you could skip that sometimes if you get too focused on the skills and 
you think that's what what's gonna make your art art is going to be you know making that perfect perfect line and having that perfectly realistic drawing so you can sometimes sometimes forget that there is that story that's super important and that will be a game changer and it will all of a sudden make your pieces look like they are inspired there is there is something more and you know even though we don't do it for results and for I mean with interior of our journaling we don't do it for the final result the viewer is going to be intrigued and, and more interested and more more interested in general so I'm just gluing, 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 glue frenzy. I'm just gonna put that glue away in a minute and do some, uh, maybe with paint, something with paints. But I do like these papers. Uh, that's actually quite a good focal point, so I'll maybe leave it for later. Oh, that bingo card, that's good. Washi tape and just tape it in. That bingo card is also available on, on those printables. So that's good. You can have it right now, even. <laughs> okay, cool. Yo. So now I will be moving on to maybe some paints, make some some nice expressive marks. I have just three colors here and that's natural red light yellow ochre hansa yellow medium and titan morris pale i don't know why i have these it's just random that's what i grabbed but here you go maybe it's my you know subconscious kind of choice right um, and that's important to celebrate that so I'm not going to be introducing any other colors when it comes to acrylics or looking for something now, whatever. It's just, it's just going to be good. I have this little piece of paper that I've already used for glue, so I'm going to use this as my palette. Um, that's going to be good enough, but usually, if you're interested in that kind of thing, usually I, I would use a, a piece of glass. I have a, a nice piece of glass here. Um, on the other side of my desk and I quite like it because it's easy to clean and um, yeah you know you don't have to use a disposable palettes or anything and the IKEA Billy shelves are really good for that kind of glass <laughs> if you're looking for glass I'm gonna grab a paintbrush it's a disaster the paintbrush fell into my tea so that's no more tea for me today. And the only thing I need is some more white acrylics. I'm just gonna grab that or some white gesso maybe. Sometimes for me in an art journal, making a very simple mark, bold mark with acrylic paint or other medium, um, is just all I need, you know. <laughs> I mean, there isn't much to it, but the simplicity of that ledger paper, the black stamp, the crows, which are so symbolic to me, I, I couldn't, you know, there's never enough words to explain that, really. And just a white mark, as silly really as it sounds, is everything to me. And then I add another color. So that's that. That's done.
using a, a large paintbrush like this one in general will help you have a little more um, expressive marks because you can't be as precise and it's once again a good exercise and a really fun exercise as well to you know help you understand and and see that we can sometimes let go of our perfectionism and our journal is a is a great place to do that you cannot control too much of the situation if you have a big paintbrush like this <laughs> so I'm just gonna get another one a little smaller this time this is getting out of hand now it's just I feel like adding these little marks a little bit here does this look like teeth and mouth yes Ah, oh, no 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 teeth not today don't teeth yesterday When you make a page that's like uh, it's mark, I mean marks that go over your little page and onto the other pages. I think it makes it more of a story and experience when you go through the book because you obviously go through it and you see these pages are some random mark. Okay, what does that mean? Maybe it contributes to a story that's already going to happen here, you know, but then you get here and it all makes sense and they make sense together, right? I mean, that's a bit silly probably, but it, to me that just, um, it just matters, I think. <laughs> Little things like this matter. And I think, you know, I sort of want to make them matter. Because like I already said, we have so many things we worry about and have to do right in our daily life and take responsibility of and, and have an something so little you know be of meaning here and that's totally yours that i think that's precious that's precious that's worth celebrating i mean the the crows they're just so special to me. You will just watch that video, okay, about me going home. And you'll know why they're special. But, um... Um, they are. They are. So symbolic. I could, um, just stamp them everywhere. <laughs> Draw them everywhere. Loosely, <laughs> precisely, whatever. And, I mean, these just remind me of angels now. Which is another thing, but I'm not going to be getting into that right now. But it is, um, it goes with the subject I want to tackle in this book. And, you know, spiritual kind of awakening. That sounds very serious, doesn't it? Well, it is. I'm just going to make some very simple marks here. So when you think about it. You look at these pages and you, you know, think whether that, what, what's finished, when is it finished, is it ever finished? So my answer <laughs> is always that no art is ever finished and you shouldn't, we shouldn't try and, you know, get to the finish line. Just accept it for what it is and just ask yourself a question. Did I have enough fun with it? with this here do i want to take it further or am i just happy just leaving it for now and if the answer is you want to do more then you do more if you spoil it because i know sometimes some of you worry that you know i worry that i'm gonna overdo it and oh, i don't want to overdo it i don't want to spoil it it if it's not a card or a scrapbooking album or like a mixed media piece that you're doing for someone, if it's just for you and it's not result-based kind of endeavor, <laughs> then what does it matter if you if you spoil it? You, you're gonna think you spoil it, but is it really gonna be spoiled? What matters is that process, and if you feel like you wanna 
dive into it, you want to do another mark and another mark and, and add more of that pink, then just go for it, just do it. You know, you have enough things to to worry about in your life, okay? To be stressed about, to be rigid about. This, just let it go. And then just rethink the, the attitude you have towards your work at the end. Why you look at it. I'm talking about art pieces and art journaling that you do for yourself, okay? I'm not talking about commissions when you probably want to do it more rigidly, but when you finish like an art journal page or something done with a tutorial or your own intuitive, you look at it, why do you look at it and you and you think and you say I like it or I don't like it or this is pretty, most importantly. Why do you think this is pretty or this is ugly? Why is this? Why do we need this um you know final judgment, right? Why? Why do we allow ourselves to be our worst critics? Why? I like to think of your inner art as my inner art, as our inner art, as our inner child. Would you say, would I say to my daughter after she finished, you know, playing with her crayons and I ha and I see she had so much fun, right? Why would I intervene at the end and say, oh, this is really good or especially this is really bad. Like, why did you waste your time on this? Look at this mud. Why did you overdo it? Why did you make these extra marks? Why would I want to do that? The only place I see I should enter, I should enter <laughs> is if I see that she is not having fun, that she is struggling for some reason and that reason maybe is in her head because she feels she's not doing the job that's good enough. So if in that process there is no fun but there is some stress then I think that means adjusting and same in our art journaling that's intuitive art journaling. If you feel that there's no fun then think about it just um, you know check in with yourself see what's going on and ask yourself that question why you're not enjoying this why this why because this is to be enjoyed and that could be your perfectionism holding you back the worry of the final result it's all these things they just come together <laughs> so I think it's worth trying this really free free art online process. It can be definitely, definitely can be healing. I mean it healed so much for me. Every stage of my life there was, I mean of my grown-up life since the moment I discovered daily art online and intuitive art online. I mean it's every, every transformation I went through starting with of moving out of the house, my parents' house, and becoming a, a kind of a grown-up, which, I mean, it didn't feel like being a grown-up. Living in a big city that I didn't know, that was in Poland, you know. Being suddenly on my own, even though I wasn't on my own, I was absolutely on my own. Felt like I'm on my own, because I wasn't, I was without my mommy. <laughs> I was without her, you know, care suddenly right so that transformation the transformation i went through you know um when i moved to england when i met jamie you know moved to a different country that's that's a big one that was a big one for me you know trying to find that identity who am i why why I am who I am and what does it mean that I am Polish, what does it mean in England, what does it mean that I live in England, so many questions that needed answering then starting to teach one the last um, moving on from teaching life you know in person lessons or journaling and, and stuff like that you know, traveling international and, and all sorts of places, 
teaching lots of people to suddenly teach online. That was also a big one. And then becoming a mother, suddenly growing up a whole lot more. <laughs> In every stage, there was our journaling for me. And I have our journals that I open those our journals and maybe you know, I am the only only one on this planet who would understand what I was trying to say on every page, but I can I can see those stories, you know, unfolding there. I can see those emotions or or feeling I was, feelings I was trying to process and understand. And that to me is so valuable. I mean, some of us do writing, right? Maybe you do writing and you find writing your outlet. Well, they can be combined, of course. Uh, and you know how valuable those journals from several years ago are. So our journaling, intuitive our journaling, daily our journaling is exactly the same to me. Now, as I was talking about it and, you know, painting, I was thinking about what these colors mean to me right now. So they mean a lot. They mean a lot. There's the yellows and oranges. The, the yellows and oranges are definitely this, uh, uh, a visual description of that stage of my life that I am at right now. So let's let that dry with my pencil friend. This is, this is a good tip, people. You want to write that down? <laughs> this is if you take one thing away from this video. It's putting pencils between pages that need drying. I, mean, I feel like I invented it and that's one of my biggest legacies but I, I probably think probably someone done it before me so maybe it's not that groundbreaking but if it is please whoever you share it with tell them that i told you <laughs> oh, oh here it didn't work now it did beautiful there we go okay so that was what was that glue so let's just do some more collage maybe or maybe let's just draw that Alexa Chung. Um, Alexa, Alexa, where's my pencil, Alexa? Do you not know? She, she, she has no clue whatsoever. Why did I even bother asking her? Pencils that I have are very blunt, so let's just let's just try with this graphite stick. I mean, graphite stick. I love it. <laughs> Don't know if there's anything better than a graphite stick. Well, actually, maybe on this occasion, <laughs> maybe something would be better. Maybe that pastel. That's a neo color. Neo colors. Well, I don't think there is anything better. I can't think of anything. It's the best. <laughs> well, Alexa's uh, face shape definitely one of my favorite too. So I hope right now you are actually doing something in your art journal. And if you do, please leave me a comment, okay? And let me know that you are actually art journaling with me because that would be my dream come true. And if you aren't art journaling right now, that's okay. I forgive you. Don't worry about it. It's okay. We can still be friends. But I need you to do some more journaling once you finish watching this, okay? So no more videos after that one. <laughs> no more scrolling through Pinterest. Just grab your journal, whatever it is. Got something or just grab a piece of paper and just make some random marks. Make them so random. They just, you know, disgustingly random. Just make them really filthy random. <laughs> I just really need you to do that. That will be my dream come true. And also, you will do a huge favor to your 
muse and your creative inner artist, okay? So you're doing it for yourself, basically. So neo colors are what is neo colors two? They're called neo color two. These pencils, and they're water soluble. So if you never experience anything water soluble, then this is what it's doing. Uh, so it's um, if you put a little bit of water, it just basically becomes like watercolor or tempera. It just flows and it's beautiful and it's really fun to use. So also this, um, where's that, Mister Stabilo Woody? I have a black one or there was a white one somewhere in this place uh, that also is similar it's very extremely creamy i mean woodies are so good and they aren't very expensive uh, i think they're like kids product but uh, also water soluble really really fun to use And if you're thinking, you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh, I wish you wouldn't use the green hair, that's just spoiled it. Just remind yourself what I just said, okay? Well, there's just no judgment here. This is intuitive or journaling. I didn't plan to use that green. <laughs> it, it was just laying on my table. That's the whole reason. So let's relax about the end result. This is so forgiven. If you stop, if you start, you know, Relaxing a little bit. It's so forgiving. It's so pleasant because all of a sudden you don't have to do it pretty It doesn't have to be great. She can have green hair, whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it even green on the other side We can have that. It's fine and Let's actually do some orange in that because remember, orange my color now. <laughs> and at the same time, I mean, you're learning so much because these accidents happen. Like, for instance, you make smudgy colors or you do that, you know, smudgy mark that you didn't, maybe wouldn't intend to do. But you learn so much about your supplies if you make marks like this, if you make mistakes like that, you learn just tons and tons and the value of that is incredible because it will help your skills, right? And we all want to have better skills, I think, right? You want to sort of improve and be better at what you do. So it's a fine balance obviously here, but it does teach you a lot. I mean, it teaches you a lot about yourself and the places, spaces in your heart and, and soul where you need to let go. So like I say, maybe it's perfectionism or control. Um, but it also teaches you about supplies. And if you do it daily or regularly, like once a week, then you are just totally, totally winning at life. <laughs> photograph actually that's my great 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 grandma so that's a good one the photo is taken in a garden of hers and the photo is taken by her son who is my great granddad and he was a very creative person 
and if not for the war I think he would he would go far in the, in his own kind of you know self-expression self-expressive way he loved photography so that's why there are so many pictures from that time he loved gardening so that's why it's always in the beautiful garden and I mean is there anything better in life than pictures in the beautiful garden uh, and he loved cooking which I also love very much and I love gardening I feel a lot of connection with this mister and he loved um, theater and I don't know about other things but I bet he loved art journaling didn't he? I don't know. Probably not. I'm just gonna glue that down. And that will be the last thing I'm gluing today. <laughs> glue stick now because I cannot be bothered with a PVA glue. My paintbrush is dirty now, so let's just put it on. need to bring another color of acrylic because I really feel like dark blue here and if you feel like dark blue you know what you gotta do dark blue okay mix it with some of that oh it's actually turning into green I'm really enjoying this this is best Usually when I work on something like this, I just um, stick to just one image somehow, you know, on my on my page. I don't know why, but that, I mean, I know why, because I know that it's going to look better if there's just one focal point. But um, that's just a thing I do. I'm just totally feeling this spread right now, so obviously I'm just not jumping into anything else because this is this is speaking my language right now. <laughs> um, sometimes you know you find that piece of paper or a photograph, like in this case, and you immediately feel the connection or there's something you know you want to explore and chase a little bit. So um, I feel it's good to chase that kind of thing. but you won't know unless you listen and you have to listen so that makes it a very you know makes it necessary for a process like this to be mindful so you have to be in the moment you cannot be listening to a podcast or or watching a film at the same time because you want to really be be in this space and with all of your thoughts just observe what's happening and what's going on, what sort of sensations, like even your body is, is giving you, you know, whether you, 
you feel in anything special and if you do then like I say just chase the thing but not for here maybe here later okay where's my white let's go with that white now So you see this one more time, I'm just going to say this, just to make the point that the intuitive process reacts to what's happening, it means you react to what's happening on your substrate rather than plan the outcome and the final result. So every mark I make is just because I feel like making it. It's just because I feel like grabbing that paint and just doing something. So this loose mark I made here and it went over those faces. It's a dry brush, obviously, so it's a bit, you know, see-through. And I straight away reacted to what's going on, right? So, and I thought, I really, really like it, so I repeated it here. And that's what this is all about. That's what you want. That's the kind of feeling you want to, you want to be celebrating. Oh, that wasn't dry. That annoys me, but that's okay, okay? Let's just relax. <laughs> You see, I do so much daily art journaling and intuitive art journaling, but I also have to remind myself of those things. It's not like I'm an expert. I just do it. And I just use it to, to help me process things. It's very quiet now. It's extremely quiet, in fact. I usually do my daily or journaling like uh, at night. So um, everyone's asleep. Both kids and the dogs and Jim is just doing his his things, trying to have some time for himself as well. And everything's so quiet so quiet I mean I love my kids but um, to have that quiet space is really important to me and also um, I think our journaling helps me celebrate that because you know if I would be switching on television right now or stimulating my brain with some something else then it would be harder for me to relax that's just my personal thing we all we all find our ways to relax but from you know my where I stand to relax I need to do an activity that's mindful and like meditative and this for instance what I'm doing right now extremely meditative if only not for the fact that I just noticed that my top is uh, has got some paint on it and it's one of my favorite tops currently but that's okay just just chillax <laughs> breathe in Whew, breathe out yeah, it's, it's good to wear an apron, definitely, or your painting clothes. But then again, right, whatever, it's just a top and I have paint on it. That's me. That's what I do. And I see the little conversations you can have in your head with yourself. <laughs> what you do daily or do yeah. Okay, I think I'm just going to be done with it for now and I'm going to finished my sesh for today um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do some more of those you know or journal with me videos and you will see the or journal you know unfolding and and changing so to when it comes to this page I will definitely get back to it go back to it maybe tomorrow maybe day after and I will just once again do a few marks Maybe draw something, maybe cover it up. It doesn't matter. I will do whatever feels right then. 
right now this is how it is right this is what we want to remember that being in the moment is important when you do intuitive or journaling this is right here right now that's the state of it and i like this state whatever it doesn't matter it's good i'm just gonna put a piece of paper here i'm just gonna close it and tidy up now because it's ideal so thank you very much for watching this remember you can get all of these printables in my creative sparks library which is totally free to join and they can all be yours and there are other videos on our channel and i will be doing more of these because i really like it uh, and i do or journaling daily so i might as well film it and chat with you a little bit uh, so if you would like to see more please subscribe to our channel i'd love to uh, to see you um, watching and commenting underneath this video, especially if that inspired your process or you're going to do some more journaling or maybe you did some more journaling while I was chatting, leave me a comment, okay? I would love to, I would love to see and connect with you. Thanks for watching and see you again or journaling very soon.